Sing take one, two, three, one, two, three. Hello everyone and welcome back to another Ableton Live tutorial video. My name is Don and in this week's video we're going to be talking about using multiband dynamics creatively within live. So let's get into it. Now before we get into the project we need to understand what dynamics is. And dynamics is basically the difference between the highest amplitude and the lowest amplitude in a sound. And this is important because that contrast between sounds sound sounds nice. You know, loud sounds good when it has a contrast with something soft. Uh, it's the same reason why um, black looks good with white as a contrast or, you know, the same vice versa. And by manipulating that within your music and, you know, getting something out of that, you can actually get some really nice sounds and really improve on the quality of the music that you're making as well. So what we're going to look at over here is manipulating multiband dynamics. So we're going to be looking at these dynamics in bands of frequencies and we're going to create manipulate that with different parts of our song in order to get uh, different results. So let's see what we have in the project. All right, so as you can see here, I have my project open. So this is a little uh, piece of music I've been working on. And I'm going to play through a couple of scenes of what I've been working on and tell you, you know, what I want to start doing. So let's have a listen. <laughs> All right, so that's a bit of music that I just, you know, put together that I've been working on. And what I really want to do over here is you can see the first track. I have this pad track here in red on the, you know, the first one. And there's this really interesting pad going along. So let's let's have a listen to that. Right, so it sounds nice. It's a continuous pad. Uh, but what I want this to pad to do is I want it to work with my drums. So generally what a lot of people to do to, in order to get that kind of breathing sound out of their pads is they just use a normal compressor and um, you know they put it on their pads and they compress it according to their uh, kick drum or any part of their drum kit in order to get some uh, movement between these two pieces. But I'm going to do a little differently. I'm going to be using multiband dynamics to uh, manipulate different parts of that sound. So what I'll do here is on this pad track, I'm going to go ahead and load up multiband dynamics. So out of my browser, I'm just going to drag and drop that onto my pad track. So as you can see, multiband dynamics is loaded and it's pretty straightforward. So basically I have three bands that I can manipulate. And you can see on the left side, it's, it's marked as high and low, and there's a mid section, and I can set cutoff frequencies for my low section and my high section, and I also have this whole section over here. So let's get in this, into this and talk about it. So when I play my pad again, I'm just gonna go ahead and play that. You can see how there were these three segments of blue bars that represent um, you know, the, the sound, the input of those three frequencies. Now, what I can do is I can actually, you know, move around these cutoff frequencies and, you know, tell my processor which band of frequencies to actually affect. I can also choose if I want to use three bands or I can even make it less. And in this case, I'm going to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just deactivate this low section. And you can see that now I have two bars instead of three. What I'm going to do over here is I'm going to manipulate the dynamics of two segments of frequencies separately. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and bring down my cutoff frequency to a little low. I'm just gonna bring it down to around, say 900 Hertz. So what I'm doing over here is I'm, I'm splitting my uh, frequency spectrum, that is before 900 Hertz and after 900 Hertz. So I'm gonna set this up differently for everything below the crossover frequency and also for everything above the crossover frequency. Now, what this also means, you can see over here these bars, okay? now. If I move these bars left and right, what this basically does is this sets a threshold. Okay. Now, multiband dynamics basically includes both expansion and uh, compression. Uh, there's both upward and downward expansion and compression on both ends. And what I can do over here is I can set a threshold, and when I set that threshold, it'll tell me what action I'm going to take either above or below that threshold. So in this instance, I'm going to, what I want to do is I want to start compressing those uh, low frequencies. I want to start expanding high frequencies to start getting this play on my pads. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm 
going to go ahead and enable my sidechain. So I'm going to open up my sidechain by clicking on that arrow, click on to turn on the sidechain. I'm going to select my audio from, and that's going to be my shady kit, which is my drum kit. And in my shady kit, I'm going to go ahead and choose my kick. And let's make sure I'm getting signal. All right, you can see that I'm getting signal in my uh, side chain, which means it's working. I'm just going to up that gain a bit. All right. So now what I want to do is, like I said, what I want to do is I want to start compressing the low frequencies of this pad and expanding the high frequencies. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and adjust my thresholds and match the peaks of both bands and make changes from there. So let's start by adjusting my thresholds. So that's where my, that's where my thresholds are. I'm just going to bring this down a bit. Let's bring this down a bit. Bring that down a bit more. All right. So now I know that I've set my thresholds just below my peaks, where I want them. And the next thing I can do is, if you notice, if I scroll over these bars, I have this kind of um, this vertical arrow over here with an up and down arrow on it. And if I click and I drag up and down, you notice that it is contracting and expanding. Now, basically, what this means is. Um, you know, expansion and, and compression. So if I start bringing it down, this will start compressing the uh, signal that's coming above this, uh, the threshold that is set. So what I'm going to do over here is I'm going to start bringing this down. I'm going to compress it. And over here on top on my high section, I'm going to start expanding it. So if I drag it up, it's going to start expanding it. So it's going to take the signals below the threshold and start bringing it up. So you can see that I'm doing that. OK, and let's listen and see what happens. Right, and immediately you can see I suddenly got this, uh, this really interesting percussive element that's added to my uh, pads, which you don't really get from normal uh, compression, sidechain compression. So let's listen to it before and after. So this is before I added the multiband dynamics. And after. Now also if I want to adjust timing, that is how fast the compression or expansion takes place and also how long it lasts for, what I can do is over here, you notice that I have time information over here. So this is my attack and release. So what I can do is maybe I can bring down my attack time so I want it to act immediately, right? And maybe on the low end I will increase my release a bit uh, so it maybe breathes a bit more. Let's see what happens. OK, that might be a little too much, so let's bring it back down. All right, and you can hear those frequencies actually pumping and playing around each other with, uh, you know, with our with our rhythm. So let's play it with the actual um, with the actual drums and see how it sounds together. So I'll just go ahead and solo my drums also, and let's see how that sounds. Right, and you can see how there's this interesting play between now my pads and my drums. And what's more interesting is because I've done this, and on my drum channel, I actually have you know different beats playing. And now when I'm actually switching between beats, the pattern of my pads will change dynamically. And I'll show you what I mean. I'll just play through these scenes again, and let's see what happens.
And now you can see by doing this, there's a lot more play between my drums and my actual dynamics and how my dynamics actually change on my pads with the different drum patterns that I keep playing. This is great not only for the studio, but even for live performances. If you're, you know, making drum patterns live, um, every time you make a change, those pads are going to change dynamically according to those drums, which will always give you a new effect and sound really great. So I hope this helps. And if you have any questions about the process I just went through, leave it in the comment section below. And as always, if you like the video, make sure to leave a like. If you loved it, subscribe and hit that bell icon to receive weekly notifications from us. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.